Hello there and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on advanced digital signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humenau University of Technology. I am Renato and this notebook is about the Z-Transform. So uh, on this notebook we are going to see the definitions of the Z-Transform, Z-Transform properties like the shift property, the um, linearity we're going to take a look at some examples and also i will talk about some recommended literature and other resources to go deeper into the z transform let's get started the z transform is a more general transform than the fourier transform and it's widely used in discrete time signals and systems and um, we are going to use it in the future banks and wavelets. And, and now we will look at the effects of sampling and some more tools in the Z domain. Since we usually deal with causal systems in practice, we are going to use the one-sided Z transform as defined by this summation here. So it's going from the causal system, it's going from zero to infinity. This is the signal in the discrete domain with the samples n and this is z to the power of minus n so observe that this simply takes our sequence x of n and turns it into the polynomial x of c so this is very interesting from the, the z transform that it turns a sequence into a polynomial and we have many tools that we can use with polynomials so first observe that we get our usual frequency response, the TTFT, the discrete time Fourier transform for a causal system uh, signal. So n is starting at zero. If we evaluate the Z transform along the unit circle in the Z domain, so when Z is equal to the e to the power of j capital omega, we are evaluating the Z transform along the unit circle in the C domain and this here connects the Z transform with the DTFT the discrete time Fourier transform except for the sample index n which for the so-called one side Z transform starts at n equals to zero and for the DTFT starts at n equals to minus infinity in general we can write complex uh, variable C with an angle and a magnitude so here we can interpret the capital omega as the normalized angular frequency and the r is a dumping factor for an exponentially decaying oscillation if r is smaller than one or exponentially growing if r is greater than one so observe that this damping factor is not in the dtft yeah, this means that the Z transform, in the Z transform, we can have a conversion sum of the transform even for unstable signals or systems, just by choosing R large enough. This means that the region of convergence, the ROC, just becomes smaller. Remember, in the Z transform sum, we have Z to the power of minus 1 is equal to 1 over R times E to the power of minus j omega so the recommended reading for this part is uh, the discrete time signal processing by Oppenheim and uh, we can also see there's the MIT open courseware this is the class offered by professor Alan Oppenheim discrete time signal processing and we find here many interesting things like the mm, uh, lecture notes and different topics. So we have minimum phase, OPS, uh, systems, group delay, um, quantization, uh, FIR and IIR, future structures, future design, multi-rate systems, uh, revisions, uh, DT, the discrete Fourier transform, FFT algorithm. So it's a, it's a very interesting course. So. I recommend to take a look at the book, The Discrete Time Signal Processing and the 
MIT Open Courseware for the um, Alum Oppenheim course discrete time signal processing. Now we take a look at some important property of the Z transform. So as we've seen before, here's the Z transform definition. We have the sum from n equals to zero to infinity, our sequence, and this multiplication with z to the power of minus n. So the Z transform turns a sequence into a polynomial in Z. So here we have a sequence, two, four, three, one, and then we apply the Z transform and we have this polynomial in z, so 2, z to the power of 0, z to the power of minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. A very important property of the z transform is the shift property. So, if we take two causal sequences, so causal means that um, n starts as n equals to a 0, so we don't have uh, negative indices, uh, we value c for negative indices, so if we have a sequence x of n and a sequence if x of n minus 1, which is the same sequence but delayed by one sample, and we take their z transform, so this is the z transform of the sequence x of n, here is the z transform of the sequence uh, x n minus 1, so we have these two results here, and if we use some index substitution of n mark is equal uh, to n minus 1 or n mark plus 1 is equal to n to get rid of this n minus 1 index in the transform so we have now this uh, here and we see that this shows that a delay by one sample in the signal sequence or in the time domain corresponds to the multiplication with z to the power of minus 1 in the z domain so we have here the z transform uh, one um, signal here's the delayed by one sample and we have that it's in the z domain as a multiplication with z to the power of minus 1 so here's an example if we have our signal is a sequence of 1 2 3 and we take the z transform so we have 1 2 times z to the power of minus 1 3 times plus 3 times z to the uh, power of minus 2 if we delay this by one sample so we insert a zero here then we will have this z transform and we see that we are multiplying this by z to the power of minus 1 so here here and here and we end up in here so in the z domain the delay shows up as a multiplication with z to the power of minus 1. Related to the shift property is the z transform of the shifted unit pulse. So the unit pulse is defined as, as delta of n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 0 and 0 elsewhere. So it's just a 0 sequence with a 1 at the time 0. So the z transform is uh, then the 1 so the z transform of the shifted unit pulse so if we have this unit pulse and then we shift uh, by these samples then we have that this z transform is z to the power of minus d so this is what we have here is the z transform of the shifted unit pulse so if we um, shift the unit poles by uh, these samples we have that is equals to z to the power of minus d another very important property is linearity so if we multiply our sequence in the time domain by a value let's say a is also in the z domain we're multiplying by the same value or if we add to sequences in the time domain is the same as adding these uh, polynomials in the z domain and of course the convolution is one of the most important uh, mathematical tools in um, signal processing and the z transform turns a convolution into a multiplication so a convolution of sequences in the time domain becomes a multiplication of polynomials in the z domain so just remembering 
that the convolution is defined of this sum here and this is because the convolution of two sequences behave in the same way as the multiplication of two polynomials of the z-transform of the sequences yeah, this is one of the main advantages of the z-transform since it turns convolution into a uh, simple multiplication which is in principle uh, invertible so here we have an example of the z-transform for an exponential decaying sequence given by x of n is equal to p to the power of n for n going from 0 to infinity and meaning this is the sequence for p to the power of 0 this is 1, p to the power of 1, p to the power of 2, p to the power of 3 and so on so this is given by this uh, the z transform of this sequence here is given by this equation here and if you remember we had a closed form solution for this type of geometric sums so this here is the same of p times z to the power of minus 1 and all of this to the power of n so this is the same type of this geometric sum if we make c equals to p times c to the power of minus 1 and the solution for this type of geometric sum was given by this equation here the thing is that now uh, n capital N goes towards infinity so we have here the c to the power of uh, capital N when n goes to infinity if the absolute value of c is smaller than 1 then this goes to 0 and then we have this solution here so remember that we have c is equal to p to the power of z uh, p times z to the power of minus 1 we need that the c absolute value of c is smaller than 1 so we need that the absolute value of p times c to the power of minus 1 is smaller than 1 and we have that the z transform is equal to z divided by z minus p so here we can observe that there is a fraction and we have a 0 at the position z equals to 0 so dz when it's equal to 0 that this is a 0 and when z is equal to p we have a pole because when z is equal to p so p minus p is equal to 0 so the denominator is equal to 0 and we have a pole so if we know the pole position we know p and if we know p we know the time sequence so the location of the pole gives us very important information about the signal but keep in mind that this solution here is only valid for all values of p which fulfill this rule that the absolute value of p times z to the power of minus 1 must be smaller than 1 so what we see is that this is true for the absolute value of c is greater than the absolute value of p and this is also called the region of convergence and the region of convergence is connected to the resulting instability of the system or signal so this means that if the poles are inside the unit circle we have a stable system so the sum of x of n converges if the absolute value of p is smaller than 1 so in this case we also say that the system or system is stable so this means that we obtain a bounded output for a bounded input this is the so-called Bible stability so it's the bounded output for a bounded input so in this case we see that the resulting pole of our z-transform is inside the unit circle so if the absolute value of p is greater than 1 then we have an exponential growth which is basically an exploding signal system so this means that the output grows towards infinity and this is an unstable signal or system so in general we say that a system or a signal is stable if the poles of its, of its um, z-transform are inside a unit circle in the z-domain or they are unstable if at least one pole is outside the unit circle so these are basic properties which can be used to derive z-transforms of more complicated expressions and they can also be used to obtain an inverse z-transform by inspection 
So for instance, if we see a fraction with a pole in the Z transform, we know that the, under, the underlying time sequence has an exponential decay or oscillation in it. Observe that we can obtain a real value decayed oscillation if we have two poles, each the conjugate complex of the other, or one with a plus capital omega and one with a minus capital omega. In this one, we cancel the imaginary part. One of the main differences compared to the discrete time Fourier transform, the DTFT. So with the Z transform, we can see if a signal or system is stable by looking at the position of the poles in the Z domain. And this is not possible for the DTFT since there we don't um, know the positions of the poles. When we take a look at our downsampled signal from previous uh, lectures and notebooks, so this is was the downsampled signal. So we had our sequence you know, multiplying with the delta input strain. So we have this, the delta input strain. And if we take the Z transform of all of these, so we will replace this by this here, and we will get the this sum here. And we see that the effect of multiplying our signal with the delta, in delta input strain in the Z domain is given by this expression here. So we observe that the, here the aliasing components appear by multiplying z with the e to the power of minus j 2 times pi divided by capital N times k, which is in fact a shift of the frequency. So if you remember from previous lectures, the effect of the removal or reinsertion of zeros changing the sampling rate from or into the signal x superscript d uh, of n at higher sampling rate and y of m and the lower sampling rate in the z domain is given by this equation here. So here we have uh, the effect of the removal or insertion of zeros changing the sampling rate from or into the signal at a higher uh, sampling rate. And here we have a Y of N at a lower uh, sampling rate in the Z domain. Finally, this is the, the last topic of this notebook. So if you want to go deeper uh, to the Z transform using Python, so I recommend that you go to the Guitars AI GitHub. There you find the notebooks and tutorials on multi-rate signal processing. This is another subject offered by Professor Schuller at the UMNL University of Technology. And there you find this uh, notebook so we can go deeper into the frequency response, uh, the relation between Z transform and the DTFT. So if we go here, and we see here there are many uh, examples, so we discuss also uh, common types of frequency transforms, and we have this topic here for the Z transform, and then also we have a uh, topic for the frequency response, so different uh, examples, we use a low pass filter as a moving average, so if you want to go deeper into a Z transform, you can check out Guitars AI GitHub so the multi-rate signal processing notebooks. So that's it and see you another time.